Hi all, I have another amazing game to show you. This is with the classic Leela ID 11248, one of the strongest ever versions of Leela chess going. And it's against the mighty Stockfish 10, just hot off the press, available for download at the moment, now on the website. So this is by David Grosvenor. He uses a time control fast and furious 40 moves per two minutes with a two second increment per, per move. The opening, c4, starts with an English opening, transposes into a Queen's Gambit accepted kind of thing. Queen a4 check, knight c6, end of book. Now, there is a slight downside uh, for White's Queen coming out. It can be subject to a lot of tempo gains. On the other hand, if White can get away with that, sometimes the center's quite good here. Let's see what happens. Knight f3, knight d5. Queen takes c4. Now the queen is hit, or no, not yet, but black is now threatening knight c2 and potentially hitting the queen with bishop e6. Queen b3, bishop e6. Awkward, very awkward looking. Uh, so here, if the queen retreats, black might consider knight takes d4. We have the queen keeping a pin on the c6 knight. It looks pretty precarious. For white to do this, a bit indulgence maybe. Bishop d7, queen b3. Now instead of repetition, Stockfish goes for it. e5, uh, trying to accentuate rapid development and potentially casting even queenside. We see knight a5 again kicking the queen. And now bishop e6, offering the trade of queens. This would be really dangerous to take on d8. It would be accelerating black's development even further and black would have a mighty threat of knight takes c2 let's just look at this i've won many a crushing game in a similar sort of position with this accelerated development it's just too dangerous for white to bear and in fact a move like this knight c2 is actually checkmate so Leela has to be treading very very carefully this is a key move and one which also annoys me when i see it on the board it actually serves to really neutralize some of black's counterplay so not helping black at all uh queen d7 g3 black gets on with castling queenside it's a ferocious looking position it looks surely that this gambit is totally justified at this moment bishop g2 because these pawns are also just doubled as well knight c4 and these knights look very aggressive a3 knight goes back on knight takes b2, white can play queen b1, safe enough, it seems. And then black is losing one of the knights. So one of the knights is at least repulsed back. Bishop f4 holding on to that extra pawn. Queen takes, now knight takes. That's important. If rook takes, then there's knight takes b2. That's going to have a small edge there. So knight takes, still a pawn up h6 g5 to try and undermine white's e5 pawn that's stopped rook d7 rook b1 which frees up the d1 knight now from duty of b2 bishop c5 now if white casually castles here if Leela casually castles here it seems black can play knight d4 so that hits that e2 pawn and if white takes this looks pleasant enough for black this kind of scenario c6 and there's threats like Knight takes a3 here. Uh, if black plays knight takes b2 here, for example, there's knight b5, leaving black pieces hanging. If the bishop moves rook takes b2, and uh, so at the moment it's a bit too dangerous. But with black playing c6 here, this position it gets awkward. It gets quite awkward. At least black's equal here. For example, this black's got a big advantage if the knight went back. So if white has to play something like this, then it looks at least an even position. So very interesting decision here is now uh, instead of castling, Leela goes for trebled pawns in the center with knight e3. It's another way of neutralizing the pressure, but at what structural cost? Is this? This looks like a mess 
B take bishop takes e3 was played inflecting troubled pawns basically on knight d4 it seems knight takes d4 this position uh, is um, good after rook c1 these rooks are embarrassed they're a bit of a liability here knight takes e takes and here b3 just winning material so bishop takes e3 is played f takes e3 and to be honest i'm reminded i'm taken back to a scene in a classic film i love the star trek movies and there was one there were three three of them singing first of all it's like a rowing boat team you know like the rowing boat teams here <laughs> and they're sort of rowing together uh we've got the rowing boat team but i'm also reminded of kirk spots and um, spock then a nimoy and mccoy singing life is but a dream row 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 your boat merrily merrily down the stream uh, anyway there's a good clip on youtube if you want to check that out for some reason i'm reminded of that so anyway is this rowing boat team here any good in this position again stockfish 10 no less is this a good time to have such structural damage would you accept such structural damage or are these pawns controlling key squares rookie eight is played what can white actually do what can leader actually do here the rooks are very distantly they're not connected at the moment we have h5 this creates an opportunity it's a very interesting plan h5 of playing rook h4 which then supports g4 which would then support g5 very ingenious plan uh, so the, the key pawn break the undertone key pawn break is actually to play for g5 which would inflict some structural damage on black so let's see this in action for the moment black plays a6 you might consider bishop g4 to try and take off this e5 pawn the head of the, the rowing boat team but let's look rook h4 black giving up the light square bishop undoubling there here this position for example because uh, there's an idea sometimes of bishop h3 so it's quite dangerous this diagonal so let's imagine that ready for knight takes e5 rook d1 takes takes and this is just pleasant enough the bishop pair here is very pleasant check e6 bishop takes h6 hits now c4 tactically this is just very pleasant big advantage so black has to be very careful with a move like bishop g4 the light square bishop will mean that this diagonal is dangerous for example so we have a6 uh, now sorry just one more time in this variation though bishop g4 let's just take this again there's one little thing i would like to show you here on knight takes e5 bishop takes rook takes it turns out rook b4 is handy <laughs> and that knight is a tactical liability here okay so with that little note let's go back so h5 a6 rook h4 king b8 rook c1 now king c8 on knight takes b4 here knight d4 seems quite strong uh, it opens up that bishop to b7 if knight a5 then g4 for g5 potentially is a strong theme in the position believe it or not for example here knight takes rook c5 forking the two knights <laughs> and now rook g4 this is pleasant enough for white so we have king c8 and now protecting the b2 pawn knight b6 knight d2 knight d8 yeah white is actually with knight d2 unveiling an attack on c6 so bishop takes c6 threat and knight d8 parrying bishop e4 interesting centralization protects the rook of course king b8 knight f3 white's pieces seem to be 
around the rowing boat team, white pieces seem to be increasing their centralization at the moment, 95. And in fact, there's still the thematic kind of pawn break G5 to play for. Uh, because this head pawn is discouraging f6, which might have been a, a defensive measure, but it's not possible here. So g5 seems more effective than usual to aim for. 97. We have a rook being swapped off here. Rook takes, king takes, bishop d5, bishop f5. So remarkably, Leela, she seems to be able to weather the storms when she's a pawn up in the opening, seemingly bypassing a lot of the tactical pressure, complications. And the position is still favourable, it seems, for White now. Knight e6. Knight takes f5 doesn't help Black at all, really. Undoubling the pawns there. Rather, sorry, not undoubling the pawns, but rather bringing this pawn duo together is not to be recommended. For example, here, rook g4 as well, hitting g7. That's going to be great for White, this ending after e4. That g7 is a big target advantage for white so knight e6 rook h2 c5 bishop g3 king c7 now e4 the rainbow team is uh, carrying on a bit king c3 hitting the bishop now g5 thematic break here seemingly thematic what's the idea well there's a nasty liberation of the bishop if the knight took potentially with e6 check and e takes f7 after taking on it on g5 uh, that sort of thing is avoided with h takes but now bishop takes giving up the bishop pair why knight takes g5 it's opposite color bishops as well doesn't this increase drawing chances knight c6 knight h3 b6 and now bishop h4 this pin with knight takes e5 is too much to bear after bishop g3 that would be too dangerous it seems so we have rook f8 now rook g2 hitting g7 interesting position but there's a tactic shot here bishop takes e2 to try and fork the king and the knight but Leela takes this pawn with check instead so rook takes e2 is nothing that's check and then this is horrible black's better so rook takes g7 check now bishop f6 and it seems in this simplified position well after taking out this pawn otherwise this is very very dangerous pawn has to be taken out but look at this position here so Leela's given up the ghost of the extra pawn but this is really dangerous for black. Tied down to e6 for a moment. a4. We have c4, and this is out of desperation. It seems almost this is a Zugzwang, Zugzwang position in a way. Because bishop g8, there's knight g6. For example, here there's bishop e7. So knight takes here, there's knight takes e7 check, winning the bishop on g8 and if black doesn't then take then bishop d6 is super strong with ideas like this it's just nasty really nasty position to be in so that's to be avoided so let's imagine we can rule out bishop g8 but king c7 then there's knight takes e6 check end of game immediately because of that pinned bishop knight a5 that releases control of e7 weakness of the last move there's bishop e7 kicking the rook away and then taking thanks very much winning king b8 there's a5 so if now knight takes there's bishop e7 and if b takes there's king c4 it's all pretty grim for black this king crashes through here it's all really grim hence this seemingly desperate ridiculous move c4 giving up a pawn back to being a pawn down after all that bishop e8 now we have the move b4 okay maybe a little tactical trap here bishop f7 uh, on knight takes e6 is amusing but uh, that's ignored knight d8 
And now if bishop takes the a4 pawns hanging some variations. For example, if bishop takes this didn't happen, takes here, takes, 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 should be equal. So b5 protects at least the a4 pawn. And the pressure is really on black here. Look at this bind, end game bind that black finds itself in. A takes, A takes, Bishop F7, King C3, Rook G8, we have Rook H7. Now there's a threat of Bishop takes D8, Stockfish plays Rook G4 here, Bishop takes, Rook takes. Another pawn bites the dust, so it's two pawns up for the moment. Bishop G6, check, and now Rook E7. Bishop takes e4, just one pawn up. Is this enough? Well, it's going to be two pawns, isn't it, now? If bishop f7, the problem is king safety, check, bishop c5, b6, bishop d6, now threatens rook a7, checkmate, in this variation. For example, here, check wins the bishop, that's end of game scenario. So we have rook, sorry, we have bishop takes e4. Not bishop f7, so rook takes e6, two pawns up. But it's opposite color bishops. Does it matter? Let's see. Leader seems to be making some inroads here. And b pawns pushed. And now, is there progress or is it high level shuffling? Making invisible progress. Let's have a look. What is going on here? This is why I'm the only one covering these games. Because I can fast forward here. <laughs> Other people don't like to, maybe. <laughs> we get to the interesting juicy bits of this game, which are instructive. One day. After Rook takes F6, yeah, we have Aurora ending. So why did why did Stockfish do that here? It seems to be getting desperate to want to do that. Well, it looks as though white is making progress. So, okay, that's what Stockfish decided at move 102. But this end game is now, it seems achievable. White can make progress via Zugzwang and stuff. The king, um, actually the game ended here. The game ended here, it was adjudicated as a win for white. But there is a way that the white king now just goes over to the other side of the board basically herds the pawn wins the bishop and then comes back for the f pawn so that is a totally winning position let's take it to the final position of the game yeah so the classic leela 11248 one of the highest ever id versions each id you can go and visit the weights it's like a, a museum a leela museum you've got the full archive all the trained weights of all these IDs. So 11248 was one of the very strongest of, of the 10 network. The 20 network had to be abandoned, but the 30 network I'm, I have good hope for, and so do many others, that it's been rapidly improving recently. It's about stock, Stockfish, at least Stockfish 7 level at the moment of this video, at least Stockfish 7. Uh, so very, very exciting project. But 11248 or thereabouts will be uh, in the next like major TCEC tournament TSEC. Uh, but yeah, it can be dangerous even against Stockfish 10 on faster time controls as this shows. But obviously, yeah, the openings have a big influence there. It just seems remarkable to me how Leela plays these positions against f what seems to be ferocious, scary pressure, but is able to construct a meaningful plan out of this opening and do something constructive so here rook h uh, h5 rook h4 g4 for g5 thematic break identified i hope you enjoyed this game video and the analysis of it please click the top left box where it should appear shortly to become a member at chessworld.net you can play against other youtubers you can also check the analysis of this and other games on the improved menu learn from the masters youtube order Comments, questions, donations, see the description. Like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Also visit my Teespring t-shirt shop for form pawns. All really appreciated. Thanks very much.